we're going to look at grass morphology. We're going to deal with different parts of the grass plant. We're going to look at roots. We're going to look at shoots. We're going to look at inflorescences. We're going to look at caryopsis or grain. We're going to do these in three different videos. We're going to start out with the roots. The root system of the grass is a fibrous root system that is localized in the upper part of the soil. This is a series of photographs of corn, zea, roots. On the end of the root, you have the root cap. The root cap is made of material that is going to be sacrificed. The cells push soil particles out so that the root can penetrate the soil. The cells are large and undifferentiated. There is a visible line that separates the root cap from the remainder of the root. Right behind the root cap, we have the meristem. This rectangle is the next area to look at. Enlarging this, we can see the meristem outlined in green and the separation of the root cap in blue. This is a rough estimate of the meristem. The meristem constantly produces new cells both to the root cap and to the main part of the root. This allows for rapid root growth. The quiescent center, outlined in yellow, is the central region of the meristem. The cells in the quiescent center replicate very slowly compared to the cells in the meristem. The arrow is pointing to a cell that is dividing. Behind the meristem, you can see the zone of elongation. I have marked five lines on the root and enlarged these areas. The zone of elongation is where the cells increase in size, especially in length. As they increase in length, they produce force that moves the root into the soil. Behind the zone of elongation, there is the zone of differentiation. This is where the cells take their final form for root development. You can see the increase in the size of the cells within the root as you move farther away from the root tip. You can also see where the xylem and phloem begin to develop. Another thing we find on roots is what we call root hairs. The root hairs are little extensions of the epidermis. As such, they are somewhat short-lived. They increase surface area to allow for more absorption. When we look at a cross-section of a root, what we're going to see is a lot of different parts. The outermost cell layer is your epidermis. Epidermis is the part that is in contact with the soil. We then have an area of parenchyma, which are large cells in here. Then we've got this layer that is stained orange. That is going to be your endodermis. The endodermis is comprised of cells with thickened cell walls. The endodermis is quite important because it's got this part part in it called the Casparian strip, which is going to cause all fluids to move inside the cell so that things can no longer go between cells. It also allows the root to pressurize things. When we look at a close-up of this, there's basically two different pathways that water can use to go from the outer part of the plant to the inner part. One is it can be picked up through the cells and it can be moved through the interior of one cell to the next. We call that particular pathway the symplast. The other thing is it can actually move between cells, which is a bit slower. As it moves between cells, it is like being absorbed in a paper towel. Eventually, when it gets to the endodermis, eventually when it gets to the endodermis, it gets routed into the cell and is under cellular control. That format is called the apoplast. There's a big difference between apoplastic movement and symplastic movement. Symplastic movement is much more rapid. Symplastic movement also has control over the movement. Things can be selectively picked up where the apoplast is not. Grass are all fibrous root types. As fibrous roots, they can have various thicknesses depending on where they're at. You can see different pictures of roots here. These are all fibrous roots. In nature, most of all roots are found in the upper 18 inches of the soil. Fibrous roots very rarely extend down beyond this. Roots are extremely important as they explore the soil to allow for absorption of nutrients in water, and they anchor the plant into the soil. 